you know, the word cancer is like the hardest word that anybody's going to ever want to hear. I mean, tumor is bad enough, but when they say it's malignant and you have cancer, that, to most people, is like, am I going to live? When I lost my mother to ovarian cancer, um, when I watched her suffer, and I literally watched the cancer eat her body, I knew that I wanted to do something to honor her memory. And the only way that I could think of to honor her memory was to fund cancer research so that hopefully no one else would have to suffer as much as she did. And I'd heard of a man named Armin Hammer who had big dreams and big ideas and who was funding cancer research. Dr. Hammer's view at the time he founded Stop Cancer was to double the budget of the National Cancer Institute. He says, what I would like to do is I would like to raise a half a billion dollars and the government would match it. He only used money for what he could do to help others. And one of his major goals was to find a cure for cancer. Dr. Hammer learned that only one quarter of requests for research grants, for cancer research grants, uh, were honored for lack of funds. Well, the only way we're going to find a cure for cancer is if there's funding for research. And so the dream began. We were funding scientific research. Stop Cancer means a great deal to me because they do something special. They mobilize people, mobilize people to care about cancer. Our mission at Stop Cancer is very clear, to raise more money, to fund research, uh, to fight this disease. The full grants that we give are for $150,000, or $50,000 a year for three years. And with the in-kind contributions from the institutions, that comes to $300,000. That $300,000 goes for cancer research. That's really meaningful. Young researchers have terribly fragile careers. They're full of brilliant ideas, but they haven't yet demonstrated their full track record. And to have an organization that helps promote their interests and allows the, the three sister institutions in this area, uh, City of Hope, USC, and UCLA, to work together, that's an extraordinary gift. Their passion and commitment to stopping cancer by devoting resources to early investigators, the most promising cancer investigators who are committed to preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Let me understand how much progress has already been made and how much potential we have. The first grant from Stop Cancer was my first grant, and what it said to me was, there's wind in my sail, go for it. This is an amazing and incredible opportunity that allows us to do research uh, that could not have been done without Stop Cancer. The seed money that Stop Cancer provided allowed me as a young investigator in the early 1990s to really begin to build that, to plant the garden. And then over time, I've been able to nourish and water the garden with larger grants from the American Cancer Society, from the NIH, the Department of Defense, various other foundations with very deep pockets um, who decided to invest in this small garden that had been started ultimately by Stop Cancer. Breakthroughs happen in unexpected places, and that's why it's very important to fund young scientists who come in with wild minds that haven't been sort of contained within the parameters of existing science, and you never know where that flash is gonna happen. We're venture capitalists for cancer research. The difference, I believe, in Stop Cancer to other cancer funding organizations is that we can track the money. We can actually track our results. I can tell the donors to Stop Cancer without a doubt that they have made a very, very wise investment in these individuals and that their investment has gone on to be multiplied by many orders of magnitude. The Stop Cancer Funds helped me to acquire nearly $2 million in, in funding. The early uh, startup funding that we received with the help of Stop Cancer has over the past five years allowed us to be awarded in the vicinity of about $3 million. Because of the seed funding from Stop Cancer, I was able to then take that innovative sort of work that we did during those two years and actually quadruple the amount of money that we could get in extramural funding in the following years. Everyone knows someone who suffered from cancer. Everyone. And of course, since we've joined, we've had many friends. Our children have had friends who have passed on from cancer. Uh, Dr. McKenna went in through the side, took out the lung cancer, 
And then he suggested that we see Dr. Barbara Gitlitz. Well, Dr. Barbara Gitlitz is at SC, and she is one of the people that we had actually given a grant to. And she has been absolutely incredible in, in helping me defeat this insidious disease. I say in the near future, maybe people, certain people will never need chemotherapy. They'll just go on one targeted agent and then we'll biopsy their tissue when that's not working, find out what pathway their cancer is taking now and put them on the next drug to block that pathway or, or just be ahead of that and block both of those roadways before they can develop resistance. I, I think that's kind of where things are headed right now. The frontier of cancer research is precision cancer medicine. Nanoparticle and nanotechnology we're working on uh, isn't being done anywhere else. Imagine that you have a particle that has molecules on the surface that will direct it to a certain place in the body. And when it gets there and gets taken into the cell, a little trapdoor will pop open, seriously. And the drugs that are inside will then come out, but only inside the tumor cell. You could envision a scenario where you get exclusive killing of the tumor, no killing of healthy tissue, no side effects, and then that would you know, radically change the way we treat cancer. We're getting closer and closer, and stop cancer can feel that. There's a lot that has been done to stop cancer. It used to be a death sentence if you had a diagnosis of cancer, and now many, many people survive. We're right on the brink. Of, of major discoveries. Stop cancer's role is more important now than it was 15 years ago. Um, the problems in, 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 in science and in medicine right now, as everybody knows, is that federal support is, 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 is decreasing and declining. The only way that we can keep the pace in this amazing period of technology is private donors, is you is Stop Cancer. We will not be able to accomplish what we need to do unless Stop Cancer and all of you understand how critical you are to us, all of us. I'm proud to tell people about Stop Cancer and I'm proud to talk about the work that they're doing and want to expose people to it because everybody wants to stop cancer. If we didn't have that hope, why would we be doing it? But I have hope and the staff and everybody else involved and the contributors and the, and the volunteers of Stop Cancer believe the same thing. Without that hope, we have nothing. I can't explain to you how frustrating this is because if you talk to any scientist, they will tell you that this is literally the most exciting time in cancer research. It's like when DNA was first discovered. They've never been closer. They, they can see it in the distance. They actually can see that cancer will be no more and there's no money to help them. So it is so vital that we continue to fund this research, and it is so vital that we do what nobody else is doing, which is fund young scientists. Because if we don't fund these young scientists, people won't go into this area anymore, there won't be enough progress, and it will be a real tragedy. We're so close.